Greetings. Thank you so much for tuning in and welcome to your girl, New Voices Amplified. My name is Claude Marco, and from time to time, we have different guests that we speak into. And for most of the times, we are talking to creatives, and today we're speaking to a creative, but who is also working in business. I'll be talking to Kumbra H. Barza, uh, who runs Deutsche Bank, an institution that is connecting Southern Africa to Germany. Kumbra, welcome to Eagra. Uh, hi, Klaus. Uh, thank you very much for having me on the show, and uh, please keep up the good work that you're doing within the creative sector. Yeah. Wow, thank you so much. It's great to have you on the program. And yes, today we'll be talking about uh, yourself, but also the initiative that you're running. Let's start with, you grew up in Yashawane. Take us through yeah. your childhood and uh, up to, to date. Yeah, thanks, Plot. Yeah, we grew, I grew up in a small town, uh, Shawane, but we grew up very nice mining life. Uh, it was quite a well yeah, structured life. We played rugby, hockey, cricket in the small town. Yeah. So it was a great community growing up. Uh, then after that, I went to Victoria High School in Mashingo. That's where I did my o, uh, o and A levels. Uh, played a lot of rugby, uh, football, and cricket again, like I said. Then thereafter, I went to Middle State University briefly before I went to University of KwaZulu Natal, Peter Maritzburg campus, uh, where I studied uh, politics, philosophy, and law. Uh, then I went uh, back to Zimbabwe. Uh, then I worked for the Zimbabwe Youth Council uh, briefly uh, in terms of within the entrepreneurship field. I think that was the time whereby we had the, the you know the five thousand youth youth funds that were being yes, given. Yes. I'll talk about that later on. Mm -hmm. I think it's one of the things that have made me become the Deutsche Connect. Then mm -hmm. after that, um, we uh, together with my friends, my partners, Manga Joe and Pride Mafede, we uh, produced my own boss uh, TV reality oh, show for, for startups. Yeah, yes. Wow. Yes, we. In 2013, we were given a franchise to run it. I think that's the year we we had Dr. Philip Chiangwa yes. and uh, the late uh, Zororo Makamba uh, as our, our co-anchors. And uh, yeah, we did that for a year. But unfortunately, because of the situation on the ground, uh, we couldn't continue. Thereafter, we formed uh, we co-founded Something Meeting, which is an online uh, buchari, which is still operating in Zimbabwe, both for diaspora clients but also we now have uh, different uh, franchises, both in Zimbabwe and South Africa in that. And uh, in 2016, I left Zimbabwe when I came to Germany and I've been in Germany for the past four years now. Wow. Yeah. You've been in Germany for the past four years, same as me, quite interesting. Uh, <laughs> but I mean, after having started all these brilliant initiatives in Zimbabwe, um, don't you feel that you left at a time when Zimbabwe needed you the most? Uh, if you look even at the liberation struggle in Zimbabwe, uh, most of our leaders, they all had to leave Zimbabwe at some point. I mean, our, our struggle is, for me, it's not political, it's more economical in terms of uh, wanting to build something for the future for our children, uh, for the young generation. But I believe that moving out of the country as well, uh, wherever you go, you gain a lot of experience you also broaden your horizon, you broaden your network. And when you go back, you can also bring something different and innovative as well. So I think, yeah, it's obviously home is best, but I think you need to have this experience as well, more importantly. Yeah. Wow. Interesting. You talk about a connection, they talk about building and broadening your network. And uh, when I was following the Deutsche Connect, and I see this is exactly what you're doing. You've created an institution that is now creating that bridge connecting uh, individuals and institutions from Southern Africa, not only Zimbabwe, but Southern Africa to Germany. Uh, what is uh, uh, Deutsche Connect? Okay. Uh, I think Deutsche Connect, uh, it's an idea that I thought of, um, I think it was actually in 2016 when I first came here, but uh, it was actually a silly idea. But then I thought, because uh, I was also quickly within the entrepreneurship space in Germany, then I realized that most of the time, uh, German business or in Africa, it's more centered in West Africa uh, and a bit of North Africa as well. So Southern Africa, despite the historical linkages with Namibia, there wasn't a lot that was happening. And we know we also came to Germany at a time where the focus on Germany became on Africa in terms of like uh, in 2017, they launched the Marshall Plan 
uh, which is whereby they're investing lots of money through organizations like the KFW, uh, GIZ, and building infrastructure as well as uh, innovative technologies in Africa. So I felt that uh, this was a space that I was also used to, and this was an opportunity that I could also take advantage of. Because imagine Germany only does 2% of its business, uh, of its export with, Af with Africa. Imagine, and Germany is the strongest uh, economy in Europe and the fourth strongest economy in the world. So this is like a big, big uh, opportunity that is there. So that was in, because I also, like I said, I'm from Zimbabwe, but I also learned in South Africa, and I've also got a strong network from some of my uh, varsity students from Namibia, Lesotho, Swaziland, Botswana, uh, Mozambique as well. So within the region. So I felt this was a niche market for me in terms of being a service provider and connecting Germany to Southern Africa and connecting Southern Africa to Germany, vice versa as well. So that is when uh, this when this was the when the idea was born and the name Deutsch Connect. As you know, Deutsch is the German language, yes. and the connect part is then uh, bridging or linking the two entities together. Yes. Wow, that's quite mind blowing there. Um, but to create the connection, I think language, uh, for me, language was the first barrier. Did you first, that is a barrier, you know, breaking the language and be able to connect business, but still uh, the language aspect? I mean, uh, that's, as an entrepreneur, in adversity comes uh, opportunity as well. So I think even for me, when I first came to Germany, even to try and get a job, even to try and uh, get a beer, you know, you need to speak the language. You need to be well spoken. So it was it's different. We, we grew up in Zimbabwe where, we, uh, because of our connection to England, we all speak English and we all believe speaking English is a certain level of intelligence about that. But no. It's actually different in Germany. English is not like a primary language, but and they are very proud people. They really love their country and their language. So for you to integrate fully in German, you should also speak the language. So I actually then saw this opportunity to say, but look, so what if Zimbabweans learned German language? You know, then I mean, we want, we're trying to build something whereby we get German people businesses in Zimbabwe, but similarly they will need people who speak their language as well when you get the customers from this end. So that is where the that, that came from. I mean, other people were already doing it uh, through the people who are doing au pair, bringing au pairs to Germany. So, but this was more being done in Bluewayo. So I also saw another opportunity to say, but people in Harare, they don't really know about all this au pair, uh, au pair initiative. They don't know about this uh, social year initiative. And people were, you know, people were, a lot of people thought this is where human trafficking uh, is being done or things like that. So you needed to conscientize people to tell them, no, this thing has been going on since 2005, since a long time ago. And young people are straight out of uh, A-level or high school, they're getting opportunities where they all not only come to be an au pair, but afterwards can be integrated into the German uh, industry, work, work industry. So this is where I also saw another opportunity as well. It's not, uh, it's not easy because like I said, there are a lot of things going on on social media, but also it's, it's more about word of mouth. So now we now have a language class uh, in Zimbabwe. I can safely say we are the cheapest in this sense. And we now doing it online as well, <clears throat> not only physically because I mean of the COVID-19 uh, situation, but online it also helps uh, in terms of interaction, in terms of networking of the students themselves and giving them better opportunities. Yeah, so this is where the language aspect uh, comes into play. Yes. Wow. Great. I'll go back to the business part, but uh, yeah. I want to ask more in terms of just the individual opportunities. You've spoken there about social year, you've spoken about au pair. Uh, for a layman, for somebody like me, I might not really understand what exactly are you talking about. Um, Who is eligible and what does this mean? What are the processes involved? Do you just learn the language and then you're eligible? Uh, and what are sort of the costs involved if somebody is going to be uh, engaged with Dot Connect? And lastly, I uh, also talk about uh, verification and, and authenticity. You spoke about human trafficking and stuff. And okay. now it's, it's, it's quite tricky to really know who is legit, who is not. But firstly, uh, who is eligible and what are the processes involved and what is social year, what is open? Uh, okay, thanks a lot, Plot. Yeah, so with this, uh, so I think, okay, uh, let me just take you back a bit. Deutsch Connect, basically, we have a few key pillars, which are namely, we do mentorship uh, from uh, 
African uh, mentors in business as well as German uh, based mentors or on, via online. Uh, secondly, we do what we call access to market and opportunities. This is whereby if you have a product made in Africa product and you want to get into the German business ecosystem, we can advertise for you, we can look for clients for you, we can take your product into the ecosystem. Then uh, thirdly, uh, we have what we call matchmaking. This is where we do business to business. Uh, if you have your business and you're looking, let's say you're a farmer in agriculture and you're looking for another farmer in agriculture in Germany, maybe for collaboration, maybe to match make and things like that, we also do that. Then finally, we have the uh, language and uh, employment opportunities. So those are the four key pillars. So in terms of what you're asking in terms of the uh, eligibility, uh, for the OPE, you need to be between 18 to 26 years old, okay. number one. Uh, secondly, you also need uh, your basic O level. They need this because when you, after you finish O pay, you can have the opportunity to then uh, get into what they call the social year, or also engage as well into state away going to nursing, or go. They call it house building in German. You either nursing or kindergarten teach, uh, teaching, or depending on your qualification, you can go into a technical school or into a university. So. I would say then that is when you then need your O levels or your A levels, depending on what you did at school. So that is very important. Then from the gym, because what is happening, a lot of people in Zimbabwe are, are their agents that say, after you finish the language, we'll organize what to call a host family from you from the German side. So it's also important for the young people in Zimbabwe to know that you don't need these agents to do things for you. Some of these things, if you go online as well, there are websites that are credible. But you also, I think in our case, we are also credible because we are actually on the ground in Germany. So we can also actually facilitate for you to talk to the host families uh, yourself, not through an intermediary. So I think that is one, one of the more important things that uh, the safety net in that the person you are dealing with, you are dealing directly with them. It's not just someone who's just there to score uh, money from you. Another thing that I think we also make what we are doing better is that once the young girls, especially when they are here, these agents, they stay in Zimbabwe. So if these girls have problems in Germany, then they have no one to go to. But because we are here, we can then be able to help where we can or to also tell them to go to the proper uh, offices or to proper help where they can uh, find help. So I think uh, the, the whole open thing is actually good, uh, but it just needs to have that, those kind of safety nets as well, because these are also young people. So the social year is also an opportunity where the German government says uh, people can come from all over the world and work for a year, but they have to be able to speak what they call B1 level of German language. Okay. So what the social year affords you is that you get paid a stipend yeah, per month, but after you finish the social year, you're then also allowed to then enter into go to college in Germany or go to university in Germany. So again, it's another way for you if you're over uh, 26 years but you want to come to Germany as well. It's an opportunity for you to come here. I mean, recently, then lastly, the skilled immigrants, we're also teaching German uh, B1 up. They also need to have B1 uh, together with your skill. Since March, 2020, Germany has changed uh, the rules, making it easier for someone with a skill from another country to come to Germany, even initially for six months to look for a job, but then to go and go back. Or you can actually look for a job from your own country, as long as you have the B1, uh, German language, of which for us, uh, it takes six months for you to, through learning with us for you to be ready to write your B1 examination. Yeah, so I think that is that in terms of the education, the language aspect of it. Yeah. Wow, great. And uh, you mentioned girls, is it also for, 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 for both genders or is just mainly these programs for pair and social are there for everyone? Yes, it's for both male and female, but I have to hasten to say that uh, for, it's easier for girls to find because, I mean, naturally, as an au pair, you're looking after children and uh, people would be more comfortable with having a, a, a girl or young woman looking after their child than a, a guy. But obviously, it takes a bit more time. Maybe it takes us more one or two months for a guy to get a, a host family. But yes, a lot of young people are, are coming as well as, uh, as au pairs. Yeah. Okay, great. And you, you speak of self fittingness there, and uh, that there, there's also an aspect of uh, creating, uh, you know, being able to validate and see that 
this family is eligible, that, that is legit, or this agency is legit. Uh, and you say you have created a system where you have also representation in Zimbabwe and representation in Germany. Um, how has been the uptake so far? Uh, uh, the up, uh, up to until the coronavirus started, it was actually growing. I mean, at some point we actually had, we were now saying we are only taking 10 students per class and that's the maximum. But now because of the coronavirus, I think uh, our people or ourselves as Africans, we have this negativity towards online learning. Uh, so a lot of people don't trust to pay money to be taught online. But it's something that we need to quickly realize that the world has changed forever. The world will never be the same again. And uh, we have to embrace online learning the way we embraced online transactions. I mean, people no longer walk around with cash. They just do everything online. This is the same thing with education now. So we are still trying to conscientize our people because people who always call us, but then they say, so when are the physical start classes starting? But we're saying we don't know when coronavirus is going to end, if it's going to end. So life is, is changing. So we are still trying to get the message out to people to say, look, we have to embrace online learning. And yeah, we are happy that. So actually, one good thing, uh, plot that has come out is that we now have students in South Africa, in Botswana, in England, because we no longer have a physical class, you know. So that, in that way, it's also been a, a positive in that sense. And in terms of certification, when you've completed and you written the exam, does it work the same, the certificate you get from an online exam? Is it the same as the one that you get from a physical exam? Yes, it's the same. Uh, depending on which country you are, you still need to take up, like I know for now in Zimbabwe, they haven't opened yet in terms of uh, people writing exams again, but there's a new one that was launched uh, that is starting next week. I'm not sure as well right now because we're trying to find out is it the one that is it still applicable here? But generally, still we are saying even if you've done the online lessons, you still need to go and go to do Gota University Institute okay. and then register for the exam. Yes. Oh, okay, okay. Because we 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 are not a, we are not a center for examinations. We just teach the language. Then once we are done, you then go and register okay. for your examination. Yeah. Oh, great, great. Um, at the end, I'll ask for the details so that those that okay. want to connect can connect. Um, you you spoke at the beginning about uh, B two B uh, connection, and I, I hear you talking a lot about the opportunities that are there for businesses from Africa in Germany. And I remember my first time here, you know, I would get into shops and I would see there's like a shop for the Thai community, a shop for the Arab community. And then there are also African shops, but to find food stuffs from Southern Africa, it's always been a challenge, you know, to find like proper mealy meal and uh, carpenter or other things. And even products just on the general market, uh, products that are coming from Southern Africa. It's, it's, it's quite difficult. Um, well, what has Deutsche Connect been doing with the recent card to create uh, opportunities for businesses in Zimbabwe that we want to export and be able to reach out to some of these markets? Yeah, that's, uh, I also had a similar, my, me and my family with a similar problem. We, we had to bring a uh, milli meal from the UK that kind of thing, even Mazoe from the UK. I think plot, it was also, it's a matter of also the numbers. If you're not many Zimbabweans or not many people from Southern Africa, there's no demand for the, for the, for the product. So it's supply and demand. So now what I, I can actually tell you as to H Connect, what we are actively doing is we've engaged uh, the African uh, shops within like in Nida as well uh, and, and in uh, NRV in Northwest. Uh, uh, so by that, we have given them products. We have sampled them products like Millimil, Mazoe, uh, I can also say Biltong, because it's not really Biltong from some of our customers uh, from Southern Africa, our clients from Southern Africa. So it's, it's a gradual process, but because of the numbers that are now coming from Southern Africa as well, very soon you'll be able to see a lot of uh, Southern African foodstuffs within the shops as well. So it's something that's not only for Deutsche Connect. I mean, there are a lot of players. I know people in being involved in that. But trust me, very soon we we'll get a lot of our products uh, into the into the German shelves as well. Uh, one thing that is important: people 
for your product to be sold, you need, need it to be known, you know. So we're also working with Simtrade in terms of getting uh, those uh, people with products that they want to bring to Germany. So I think you also saw, I just sent a picture of uh, some avocados that were from Zimbabwe that were in the German, uh, that are being sold in the German supermarket. This is what we need to do more of things like this for our country to get our economy back to where it belongs. I think there are a lot of opportunities plot, um, not just for entrepreneurs, but for young people within Germany. I think Germany is a country that was not really involved in Africa, you know, like uh, the Anglo, uh, Anglo and Francophones, the way they were. So, but now Germany realizes that Africa is the next biggest economy. So if they don't join, uh, because Africa is where the biggest problems are, that is where also lies the biggest opportunities. Biggest opportunities. Germany, the most innovative of all these countries I'm talking about, they've got the infrastructure, they've got the expertise, they've got the efficiency, they've got the, the know-how, the means. So definitely, uh, it's always good to try and link as much as possible people within that uh, sphere. Uh, oh, before I forget, because I also wanted to say something to the creative guys as well. Yeah. Germany has a lot of opportunities, not only, like I'm saying, it's, I think what is also important is the language, like we said, the language aspect, number one, but number two is the network. Uh, do you know the correct people? Who are you talking to in those countries? Because there are a lot of people, I mean, right now I'm working with a young guy, uh, Josh Chaps, uh, he's into creatives, he's, he's, he's into art. Uh, we are bringing his art from Zimbabwe into Germany. He's getting clients from Germany through wow. art. I, it's something that I didn't know about myself until I started uh, engaging with Josh. So I can see opportunities for anyone in any field. But what is important is for us to create a strong network. Because I think one thing that also kills us as Zimbabweans, especially, is I'm uh, Kumbirai Chpadza. I didn't take an no zero, you know. Yet uh, we need that spirit of Ubuntu, you know, togetherness. We are stronger together than uh, individual. Yeah. Great. Quite interesting because you mentioned the, uh, you know, the, the artists that you've referenced to. Uh, last week there was a post by Zintred and they were talking of sculptors it's... that managed to come together and they've created this giant giraffe sculpture which is being shipped to Germany. Uh, and they helped to facilitate that. And I'm looking at uh, many opportunities for creatives. I see them even in the performing arts field that original, authentic Zimbabwean content is a market, mm -hmm. it is a space. It, it, it actually has not managed to uh, create much presence. You know, you, you still find stone sculptures, you find uh, some artifacts, some music, but there's still a lot of space for them to actually uh, connect that. So if I'm a creative or a content creator, is there an opportunity for me if I get in touch with uh, Deutsche Connect? Well, Flood, I'm a businessman. So there's an opportunity for everyone. I mean, it's all about value proposition. What, what, what are you, what, what, as a content provider, is your content relevant? Or well, let's, let's find relevance for your, con for your content. But I mean, uh, you know, through my through working also with Afrolink, uh, where I'm the ecosystem <coughs> sorry ecosystems manager, and uh, like basically the whole uh, EU Africa business network, I am involved in that. Uh, uh, so I also know the correct people to contact. The I mean, for me, the strongest point of what I think in business more important than uh, even funding is the network. I think you're. That's for me, that is what is important because sometimes if I know plot and I can just be able to co plot, say, plot, I've got this young guy, listen to him. You know, you he doesn't have to have a meeting with you, he doesn't have to have uh, all this uh, send a CV, you know, because of that network, because of the trust we have with one another. So I think, yeah, I think for creatives, for anyone out there who wants to get into the German business ecosystem, wants to get into the EU business ecosystem, let's find a way how do we collaborate, how to to work together at the end of the day. It's about making money. We need to find a value proposition that makes us uh, put bacon on the table. Yeah. Wow. Let's uh, find the connection that makes us put the bacon on the table. It's quite powerful. Um, anybody who wants to get in touch with you, be they business, be they an individual, how do they connect? Uh, what are your social media handles, but and also uh, your website and email? Yeah, I think. Uh, you can contact us at www. Deutsch, Deutsch, uh, what's the, what do you call that? Um, uh, that I that dash like 
Uh, we are on Facebook under Deutsch Connect. You can send us a message on Facebook. Similarly, we are on uh, Instagram. We are on Twitter under Deutsch Connect. Uh, finally, uh, you can also send a message at uh, info at uh, Deutsch Connect. I think you can also give them as well the phone, our phone numbers, then okay. they can also be able to contact us. Yeah. Uh, good, good. And yes, especially Deutsch. Yeah, I have a short piece of it. 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 Yeah. I have a short piece of it. Uh, so. yeah. well, but you. I don't know what you mean. It's not, it's not really easy, but it's, it's quite uh, yeah, possible. Yeah, it's quite good. Yeah. It's quite possible. Yeah. And if you're young, I think this is an opportunity for you. Um, even if you want to contribute back home. And like for me, mm. I feel now I'm actually doing more than possible what I could be doing whilst I'm at home. I'm helping out my family. I'm able to uh, also pursue my different creative projects. Nothing has really stopped me because of the digital age. So I think mm -hmm. we've all become global citizens. So no matter where we are, we're still Zimbabweans at heart. And learning a new language is also, you know, more empowerment to 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 someone. Plot, I I I applaud what you're doing. The great work that you guys are doing. Keep it up. I mean. We are here in Germany. We are not here forever. We are here to take ideas, to sure. develop ourselves, so that we develop our country. I mean, we should never forget where we come from. So in everything that we do, let's try and, I mean, even from where you are, you are someone who can mentor young artists, young creative people already. So you start in your field. I start in my field. Tomorrow, we all do that. We get, we, we, we create a young a youth that is more intellectually, and globally focused than just being focusing on my local. I mean, I, I grew up in Shawani, like I told you. At times, just going to Mashingo, going to Harare was a big thing. But like now, we're talking on a global stage as well. So this is very important for the young people out there to find mentors, not only the big people, but even just someone who's in a similar space as you can just help you with a few things. Yeah. And whilst you were in Shawani as a kid, did you ever imagine yourself, I mean, like uh, stepping onto the global stage? Ah, uh, well, I've always had big dreams. <laughs> I used to think I'd play for Manchester United. So, I mean, that's a global stage. And I used to think I'd play rugby at the World Cup. So, yeah, I still had big dreams when I was in Shani. Don't worry. <laughs> wow, great. Wow, thank you so much. I've been speaking there to Kumbira uh, who is an entrepreneur who's also a creative. He says he's a poet. Uh, one day we have an interview with him where he's going to recite for us a poem. But today we've been talking about the opportunities and the connections that is creating for businesses and individuals in Southern Africa uh, and Germany. He's living in Germany. And he spoke about the language lessons that they're offering online where you're able to learn uh, the German language uh, up to um, B1, right? Yeah. Yes, and then you can take up an exam at the German center in Harare or wherever you are in Bulawayo. Uh, and elsewhere, also within Southern Africa. And now they've extended, he also mentions that they're also teaching students from the UK, which is quite brilliant. So for you to get more information, go on www.connect.com to get more information there. And I think uh, you also mentioned your social media, Facebook, it's like Deutsch Connect, right? Yeah. Okay, great. Well, it's been awesome. It's been a great 30 minutes speaking to uh, Kumbirai, and I feel encouraged, I feel inspired. And to everybody who's watching, just drop us a question if you want us to connect to you, but we'll also put the link uh, in on this conversation, on the description, and also on screen. Until next time, stay tuned. Ear growing your voice is amplified. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Cheers. You're welcome. Thanks.